Welcome to The Point, news from Noise daily market call presented by Catan Ferretti Financial. We are cutting out all the clickbait, the advertisements, the self-promotion content that you're getting from CNBC, from Business Insider, from Bloomberg, and we're only taking the news that matters and condensing it and putting it right in your inbox daily. I'm Brad Roth, CEO of Catan Freddy Financial. This note is being put on by Bobby Fry and Cameron Roth, who work very, very hard late nights, early mornings to get this to you every single day. Do not forget to subscribe to this note. Also, do not forget to subscribe to our full podcast, The Investment Advisors, which you can find on iTunes and Google Play if you want a really deep dive and deep look into our firm, as well as get great insights from all the guests we have. So let's get right into it. This is The Point Daily Market Call presented by Catan for Ready Financial. Good morning, Cameron. Fire away. What do we got in the news this morning? Uh, U.S. future markets are indicating a slightly lower open as the markets await Thursday's testimony from former FBI Director James Comey, the U.K. election, and the European Central Bank's announcement on interest rates and monetary policy direction. Details on yesterday's Apple announcement included new Siri functions for Apple's new smart speaker as they compete with Amazon and Google. Job openings will be reported at 10 a.m. today and consumer credit at 3 p.m. tomorrow as the data announcements are low for this week. Fox is entering the video game business by purchasing California company Aftershock, and Amazon is lowering its membership costs for Prime Services, keeping their competitive moves against Walmart to an almost daily frequency. Articles are plentiful on speculation of upcoming election for results in UK. The London mayor predicts a tougher fight against terror attacks if May wins the election. Guess Incorporated faces a formal European Union antitrust investigation over suspicions the clothing manufacturer and retailer may be thwarting cross-border sales to potential consumers. The governments of Germany, Denmark, and Belgium backed a pledge to install 60 gigawatts of new offshore wind power next decade. Japan had finished lower and the yen higher with many heavy equipment makers leading the fall. Most of these companies were thought to benefit from potential U.S. infrastructure spending, but Thursday's testimony by Comey is adding potential risk to infrastructure developments. China and Russia continue to expand into small, poor country as Chinese banks underwrite bonds for remote countries and markets. Japan's Fujitsu works to integrate their PC business with Lenovo, and South Africa enters recession for the second time in eight years. Now, Bobby, there's not a whole lot going on um, over the summer right now, but you have Japan falling overnight. The yen is strengthening and gold is higher. What kind of insight do you have there for us? Well, um, again, to reiterate yesterday, you know, we're still waiting for another earnings season to come around. So we just exited an earnings season. But uh, more importantly, you know, we're looking at a a day of Thursday, which is in a slow news summer, a day that's going to have a whole lot of information coming out. I think uh, Theresa May's uh, election in... The UK and the fact that her probability of winning continues to fall is more what markets are looking towards than what Comey could say uh, about President Trump. Though, on the other side, you look at the companies that fell overnight in Japan, which were a lot of companies that could benefit from stronger infrastructure uh, building in the United States. And you say, well, okay, uh, you know, Comey's testimony, testimony could have a large impact on the direction of infrastructure spending in the United States if he does implicate, you know, Trump in some kind of thing that could lead towards impeachment and whatnot. But generally speaking, um, you know, markets are still going to be in a <clears throat> holding pattern until Thursday. Um, something else that we're still looking at, <clears throat> excuse me, is, you know, what's happening in China, right? So we've got Every day, more and more questions on debt in China, and it's becoming more and more a scenario of an if than when uh, will some of the debt bubbles crack in China. Now, China is a very difficult region for us domestically to analyze. Um, it's a communist government. They have an entirely different way of analyzing and, and interacting in free markets. And so what do we do? Well, luckily this Thursday... We're bringing a guest on our weekly podcast, uh, Mr. David Iwinski, who is an expert in China. He does Chinese M&A deals. Um, he's been involved in China for the last 25 years. 
Uh, so anyone with questions on China, please email us ahead of Thursday. We'd love to get your questions in front of Mr. Iwinski uh, when we record next week's podcast, uh, next <clears throat> next week's week-long podcast. Other than that, uh, why don't you take it away with any insights into sports here, Cam? Yeah, last night the Nashville Predators defeated the Penguins 4-1 to to even the series at 2 as the series will shift back to Pittsburgh for Game 5 on Thursday. There's a break in the NBA schedule as the series will shift to Cleveland for a must-win Game 3 for the Cavaliers where they find themselves down two games to zero. Colin Kaepernick was passed up by the Seahawks when they signed Austin Davis, and he's running out of time to find a team for this year, but I'm sure someone will be willing to take the risk. Phil Mickelson is stalling his vie for the Grand Slam by opting out of this year's U.S. Open to attend his daughter's graduation. All right, well, I look forward to reading more about your uh, your sports insights in this morning's news. Other than that, we'll see you all tomorrow. This was The Point for Tuesday, June 6, 2017. Have a good day, everyone.